I'm making this video as a response to what I'm hearing being discussed by about the um, luminosity and the occult symbolism and things like that. Um, I, ca I came across this specifically um, after 9-11 um, and especially up to 7-7 London um, and what I'm noticing is because this is right in response to Alex Jones um, interview with Jordan Maxwell and then the guy who um, is talking about the buying rhyme Vine Ryan, who's talking about um, coming from a Jude Christian perspective, you know what I mean? And I want to really bring up something completely new, you know, because it's very rare. I mean, I can't see it anywhere in the net anyway. So you have to bear with me because it's kind of like I'm exploring it as I go along, you know what I mean? The only other person that I'm aware of that is, is coming from, that has influenced me, I don't know if you know someone, and um, brought me into depth, is Monica Sue. That's Monica, and the second name Sue, which is S J O O. Okay. And uh, she was a Swedish artist um, who was very, very. Um, knowledgeable about goddess religion and way before 20 before 9 11 she was exposing the patriarchal emphasis in new age okay and she also was very aware of the patriarchal emphasis well patriarchy in judo christianity the Abrahamic religion. So I want to. This this might be a series. I don't, you know, we'll see how it goes. But I want to you to explore with me out of the box, if you will, because what I think a lot of the most of the p ninety nine point nine percent of the people that I've come across, including Jordan Maxwell. Um, seems to be exploring it from inside the box, which means is they are caught up in this light versus dark type scenario, right? which falls right into the trap of the Illuminati model. Okay, um, and I want to try and explore it in a different way but it's, it's going to be difficult because you know it's like off the cuff um, uh, but for, for example if we, if we just see in, in the interview Jordan Maxwell with Alex Jones he's asked what he really thinks about what is going on and he says something like um, he really sees that it's a dark force because, like, members of the Illuminati have, have tried to have been in contact with their spirits, you know, things like that. That he thinks that there never could be any kind of like goodness on earth, and that really it's a t this is testing ground for us. And our best bet is to get the hell out of here. Do you know what I mean? Well, that is like pure Gnostic because like the Gnostic idea was that the world is evil okay and our true home is away from the earth into the spiritual realm which is all good and pure and things like that so that's really like a Gnostic idea and Gnosticism of course influence um, you know Christianity and you know Societies we know it actually because even though it might seem um, secular, all these you know 
mythical ideas that, that permeate all areas of life, even though you might not be aware of it. So I think it's really worthwhile to explore this. And so as I say, do it outside a box. And to do that, you have to understand the whole myth about light and dark. What does it mean? And also what is matter and what is spirit? Because when you look at all these belief systems, which includes the Illuminati, Luciferian, whatever you want to call it, Satanism, and it includes the Abrahamic religions, Gnosticism, you know, um, Platonism, and all, you know, like that. And all that that has influenced Zoro Zoroastrianism. You have this idea of a conflict between light and dark. Okay. Um, and you've also had things like the the messianic systems, like the Essenes, okay, and really um, preceded the Christians and, and the the um, children of light versus the the children of darkness and things like that. So it's this theme running through all what we're calling patriarchal ideas, systems, you know, of a kind of like war between light and dark. Um, and they run out of time, so I'll have to do it for now.